In this video, we're going to learn about generics in Java. So let's jump into it. Now, of course, to be able to learn about generics, we're going to take some examples and explain what happens in each of them. Now, if you work with collections in Java, you probably notice that if you want to declare a list, for example, we have to specify here a type, let's say integer. Of course, it can be anything like string or user profile, right? Custom types or any other type. And of course, we need to provide that type to specify which type of elements we want to store in that list. And this is actually called a generic type, right? Because it kind of makes sense that if you want to create an implementation of a list or a hash map or any kind of collection, you want to be able to make the implementation as generic as possible so that you can store any type of elements in that collection. Of course, the complete syntax of that definition is to place the generic type right here when we, when we create an instance of the class, but IntelliJ IDEA allows us to omit this part and replace it with empty angle brackets. And one important note here is that we can't place here on this generic type uh, a primitive type. For example, we can't have a list of uh, primitive int or double the type that we provide here should be a reference type because in the background, the compiler ensures that this type actually is a derived class of object. So for that reason, we have to provide here a reference type. Now, of course, let's uh, add a couple of uh, elements into that list to kind of play around with it. Um, so let's say we want to sort that list, right? And um, we don't want to use uh, collections.sort uh, directly because um, it would be too simple and we won't actually learn anything. So for that reason, we decide to create a different class that we call list order engine. It's not a very simple name, but we can see it just as an engine that allow us to order the elements of a list, right? And let's say this class has uh, two methods. The first one is uh, called sort, and it takes a list of integers, and the only thing that it does is to call collections.sort on that list. Of course, this is just for the sake of the example. This particular pattern that we're going to learn here can be easily extrapolated to any real use case. And let's say we get a different method that is called randomize, which does the same thing, except that it uses the shuffle method that we have on the collection class, which simply does a reordering or a permutation of all the elements in a random order. To be able to use that class, we just have to create a new instance of it and we can simply call the sort method by using the list that we have just created. Now, of course, because we have a collection that um, is generic, right? In this case, list, it would be really nice if our class, the list order engine would be generic as well, right? Because if you are able to store any type of elements here, you should be able to sort them as well. And similarly with the randomize uh, function. So to be able to do that, um, instead of list of integer here, we should be able to pass basically a list of any type of object. And to do that, we just have to add a generic type to this class. And the way this works is by uh, adding here on the class definition uh, angle brackets. And inside those angle brackets, we should add a name for our generic type. Usually it's just a letter, uh, but it can be any kind of uh, string. It can be lower and uppercase. It's usually one letter to be more convenient to actually recognize. So what this actually means is that when you want to create a list order engine, you have to provide a type that will be applied on all the methods or all the fields that we have on that class level. So in this case, we want to accept in the sort method a list of objects which have the type that we provided here when we created the class. Um, and we're going to take a look on this error in just a second. But first of all, let's take a look on those warnings. So it says that we are using right here the raw use of parameterized class list order engine, which is kind of confusing. But what it actually tells us is that we need to provide here a generic type in the same way we did with the list class. So we just have to do basically the, the exact same thing. And on the compile time, this type will be replaced anywhere we referenced it inside the class. Now, if we take a look on this error, it says that uh, we have no instance of um, type variable t exists so that it conforms to compatible. And compatible is basically an interface that uh, when implemented by a class, 
it means that all the objects of that class can be compared. So if you take a look, for example, on the integer class, we can see that it implements compatible of integer, which kind of makes sense because we can compare two integers to see which one is bigger. And similarly, this collection.sort method, if you take a look on it, it says that uh, it accepts a list of t and this t has a restriction. So what it tells us is that we can't really place any type that we want here. If you create any type like user profiles or user manager or any kind of class that you have in your application, you can add it here. That class should extend compatible. And we can ignore this part for a second. We just have to focus on that part. So any class that we add here should extend compatible. And because of this restriction, we have to update our generic form here to ensure that it follows the same principle. So we just have to say that T extends compatible of T. So what this means is that when we create an instance of the list order engine, we have to provide here a type that extends compatible of T. In this case, integer follows that restriction. So we don't have any problem with integers. But if we want to use a different class, we have to make sure that that class implements comparable. And let's actually do that, right? Let's create a class called user profile, which only has a unique field called in, let's say, integer age, which is actually private. And we create a constructor, which actually initializes that field. And we also have a getter for that field, right? This is our custom class. And we want to use that list order engine on user profiles. And of course, we want to add elements in that list, which follows the generic type of our, of our list. If you take a look on that error, it says the type parameter user profile is not within its bound. It should implement compatible. So we, we accept here a type that extends compatible, but our class doesn't do that. So we have to make sure that it actually implements compatible of user profile. And of course, we have to override this compare to method. And right here, we're going to rely on the fact that integer is compatible. So we're going to say age.compare to o.h. Just a quick um, explanation here. So basically, compare to method returns an integer which can be negative one, zero, or one, depending on how those two objects actually compare to each other. In this case, the way we compare to user profiles is reflected on the way the ages are compared between those two objects. And those two objects are the current instance, so this, and also this other object that is provided in this compare to method. If you take a look on the compare to function, we can see that it does exactly that, right? So it, if the first element is less than the second, it returns minus one. If they are equal, it returns zero. Otherwise, it returns one. So that's a very simple way to um, implement the compare to method by just relying on the fact that other classes are comparable. This, of course, is a very simple example to kind of highlight the use case. So we updated our class to match this restriction. This is also called boundary, by the way. In this case, it is an upper boundary. Any class, any downstream class which implements compatible should follow this particular restriction. But now what happens if we have a class which derives from user profile and we want to use that class on our list order engine? So let's say we have this um, new class that we call complete user profile which extends user profile and we have to match the the constructor so you can imagine this class as being a one that has more fields and methods than user profile and we want to use that class right here so we want to create a list of um, complete user profiles and we want to add here uh, one element in the list and we create a list order engine of complete user profiles so what happens here if we take a look on the error it says that type parameter is not within its bound, it should implement compatible. So in other words, it says that our derived class should implement compatible. And let's do that to see what it actually says, complete user profile. So now we got a different error, which says that compatible cannot be inherited with different type arguments. What this means is that user profile already implements compatible. So I can't actually define a derived class, which again implements compatible, with a different generic type. I can do this with this type, right? So it doesn't work that way. And the way we solve that issue is by specifying a lower bound for the generic type that we accept here on the comparable interface. So basically, we want to tell the list order engine that we can accept any type here that extends comparable. And on the generic type of the comparable, we want to be able to accept 
any class which is higher in the hierarchy comparing to our type. And the way we do this is by using a wildcard. And the wildcard is ba basically means whatever type you want to provide. It's similar to star in regex world. So we have to do something like that. Question mark, which means wildcard or any type, super of t. So it means that you can provide here in this generic type any type that is a super class of the type that you provide. In this case, we provided a complete user profile for the T, right? And this particular boundary is satisfied if on the class hierarchy of that class or the, any base class of that one implements comparable, right? This is what this uh, actually syntax is telling us, right? So in this case, complete user profile extends user profile, which implements compatible, right? And because user profile implements compatible, this restriction is satisfied. This is called again, a lower bound. So we specify this lower bound here, right? So this, this type that we provide is a lower bound in the class hierarchy or interface implementation, because essentially it's still hierarchy, even if you implement an interface or extend the class. Now, another thing that we may want to do is to create a list order engine of user profile, but use a list of complete user profile. In this case, if we declare the class like this, to be able to use this sort method, we are forced to have a list of user profiles, but we don't want to do this. We want to have more flexibility in the types of elements that we have in the list that we provide in this sort method. So to do that, we can use again a wildcard where we want to say that we accept in this list any element that extends T, right? So I provide here the user profile type, but I want to be able to use complete user profile, right? Because it is this is a derived class of user profile. And to do that, I just have to say this upper bound, right? Where I say that my type can be a super class of any type that I want to provide here. This generic definition can also be specified on the method level, not necessarily on the class level. So we can take this and place it right here uh, before the return type. But that means that the generic restrictions and type definition will only be valid in the context of that method. So we'll not have class level visibility. Here on the other methods, we just have to either define other generic types as well or use specific types. We're going to place this generic type back on the class level because I want to highlight a last and a very important thing about uh, type restrictions because essentially this is the, the whole magic with uh, generics, right? To kind of know uh, how to play with those boundaries. And now because we learned about upper and lower boundaries when we define generic types, we can actually take a look on uh, this uh, definition of the sort method to see what it actually means. This generic type T has to extend compatible and the generic type of compatible can be any superclass of T. This was built of course to be able to have more flexibility into the types of elements that we provide here when we want to sort uh, a list. Now, the last thing that I want to show you about um, generic types and restrictions specifically is the way you combine multiple uh, upper bounds. So if you want to say that our generic type should extend compatible, but it should also extend closable. Closable is an interface that only has a close method usually used when we have classes that deal with uh, IO and we have to make sure that uh, we close them before releasing the resource. And to be able to uh, mark that we want um, a type to extend two or more interfaces or classes, we have to use this ampersand operator, which acts like and, right, in uh, Boolean logic, works on generic types as well. Of course, now user profile doesn't comply anymore because it doesn't implement closable. So we have to add here the interface as well we have to implement close method and now the compiler is happy. And of course, because we added this restriction here, when we play with our list, we know that we have the close method because any elements that we have in our list follow this restriction. So essentially generics allow us to have type safety because if we define those restrictions for a type, you definitely know what methods you have available and on your class and what kinds of operations you can execute with, with those objects, right? All right, so with that, thanks so much for joining. If you like this video, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.